So when we look at this Scorpio coast <clears throat> in this region of the Pacific, as we see here in the middle section of the American continent, the northern border of Nicaragua includes all of Mexico and most of the Central America. It is in this area that the main body of pre-Columbia art was produced. So when we look at the artifacts in this area here, it says this is the body of where the most of this, this arch archaeological site. When we look at how, look at how the time periods here were calculated. When we look at the early pre-classic period, we're looking at a period around 1600 BC, pre-Columbian art, all right? Now this is not too ancient, but this is what we gotta understand when we look at these artifacts. Uh, the Pacific Coast of Mexico. It is this region of the Pacific Coast of Mexico of uh, the Scorpio Coast that we see here where the body, where we see the body of the, most of the artifacts. So it's during these particular times here that we start to see where a lot of the mongoloid type um, that comes into play with some of these artifacts and the different migrations that take place here in America. So there was many ways of migrations that came in through the north through these northern tropical regions, through these northern regions of Canada and Alaska, through this tundra that would come down, especially during the fall and the winter, into these regions. And you start to see this around these periods, around the early classic, late classic. This is after the period in times you have Rome and other other nations becoming uh, relevant historically in the East. European nations, uh, we're talking about Rome and Greek. Uh, so we understand this time period, these Greco-Roman periods also, you gotta understand, uh, have an effect on the Mesoamerican art. So when we look at these, the art here that, that's original to these different time, classic periods, different time frames, uh, it's essential to know the time period. Uh, but when we look at the ancient, you'll notice that these regions, this is where you find a lot of the melanated, the darker hue. We look at the different districts, right? We're talking about Guerrero and Costa Chica and these regions here, the Pacific, Pacific region. This is where you find the majority of the melanated people here in Mexico, the ancient people, the aboriginal people that travel on the sea coast and dealt with the Polynesians and the Hawaiians and these different islands. So when we see here, this Coptic cross, this Ethiopian cross, you gotta understand the Ethiopians, black, and they goose travel to this land region, the ancient shamans. So we look at here at the time of this Halloween, Samhain, and a lot of the other festivals of the dead, all saints day. Now this was essential because we understand the 40 days in land, leading into uh, the Passover, Easter of the spring time, this particular time to leave this coast, to be able to be in transition, to come into the time of the May sign, of May, to come into the, into the region of the May, in May for the first fruits of the day of Pentecost, in these times of the holy days. So these pilgrimages were essential. As we see here, this Coptic cross, um, on this, when we look at the buck cobs, and the four sun, the four gods of Horus, the four cardinal points, and the essential of this calculation of the, using the 13, 20, right? In the weeks of 20, but we understand 13 weeks, 91, 91 days, and times four, and the mapping of some of these temples and the monuments, the foundation, the patterns shown to Moses in the heavens, and the crossings in Mexico, and the she, the key people, and we have to understand these people here along this Pacific, in this ancient coast culture of basket making, uh, the artifacts show and prove. All right, when we look here at the different forms, yes, there was mongoloid, there were white, many different races and variety, as I mentioned, the Greeks, the Selks, uh, the Druids. A lot of these different people came to the Americas. They had to come here to hear. This is the land of the oracles, the land of the Ora, Ka. So we understand the hearing from the Orca, the Ark, 
And the Ark, the Seraphims, the Cherubims, the protection, and the Scorpio, and a lot of these rituals that you see here with the volcanics and what have you, and the Devarad Divas. Understand that this coast, uh, we look at the pretty lady period, right? The pretty lady period, the Garo Pacific Coast, late pre classic, is an actual uh, collection of Negro heads and from the plateau of Mexico during this pre classic period. So, when we look at the pre classic period at this time of the Pacific here, these is where, where others have came later, the latter point, until it wasn't until you look at. There's reason of Guerrero and uh, these deities in relation to the culture here in the Americas, more specifically Mexico, the South, this district of the South. Here, two Negro heads on page 48 are quite conspicuous. They prove that this racial type can be found nearly everywhere in ancient America, if only. The small numbers and it is isolated in instances. Much the same can be said for the next group, which is probably also made its first appearance in every remote times of the Pacific Coast of Guerrero and Costa Chica and Osaka. It says, due to their peculiar and easily recognizable eye technique. So, the features of the Negro, as you see, they had many different features that they depicted, right? So, many different migrations took place coming into this land uh, because of its location being in the subtropic and also being in this time of the south in these regions here in this land is the crops the fertile fertility crop look at pre-classic as we were just seeing here this what this said here about this monument here where we find of uh, the primeval spoon and prehistoric uh, tools, right? Where we find the pretty ladies, these Negro faces, right? This is pre-classic. So pre-classic is from this time period of 1600 BC to 1000 BC all the way to 300 AD. From the Valley of Mexico, we find semi-Asiatic. When we look at these G people and the Omex, you have to understand when we look at the G, you have the Golden Mother of the West and these journey, the journey to the West of the Zhang, G dynasty, right? This first dynasty, we understand the Shin and the G and the tra the phonetic uh, transliteration. We got the Golden Mother of the West in this region here of uh, Queen, the Queen Khalifa and the mythology behind the griffins and some of these animals that we see present um, on the Narmer's palette. But when we see here of uh, this region and the, the pretty ladies in this time period, we have to understand the muses and how Greco-Roman culture was formed from these muses, the women, and the capturing of the woman and the use of the woman to invade this mother culture here in this land, this domesticated culture that developed three sisters to cultivate their crops. When we look at the, the specifics of corn and fertility to make food, the bread and the manna, we understand to be able to sustain ourselves during these harvests, during these times, based upon these crops, this region, this land was a promised land flowing with milk. This is late classic, still classic period, right? Still following the, the Negro type. Here, in this region. So we, we look at this land, um, there's many different migrations, but understand the cultivators and the developers of the fusionism that we find worldwide throughout many different cultures. We have been the priests, the guidance, the mediums for the whole earth. So the earth is out of order. And the scripture says that the earth is out of order because we are not in our proper positions. In Psalms 82, it says God has a job, has a duty 
to deliver. God has a duty to deliver. Right? To do justice. Now, when we understand the fatherless, right, and the widows, and what we see our situation uh, with the mass of our population in these city uh, strongholds that we exist in, we have been so disenfranchised from our culture, from our way of living, that we no longer know how to naturally eat. When you understand animals, when you look at uh, the zoo, right, or other type of um, facilitations of wild animals, if an animal has been born, this nativity in this type of facility, it is not, go- animal is not going to be able to live in its functioning environment, meaning, a lion that's born in captivity or a lion that's born in a zoo is not going to develop the instincts and necessities to exist freely independent from the one that is in possession of the baby lion. So when we look at these zoos and these different things, they cannot prepare them for nature. So these animals for their own survival are better to remain in captivity than within nature, supposedly according to this logic, right? So when we look at at this fact that we have been born in a captive state and no longer know how to live freely, we no longer know how to eat and go in, we no longer know how to live freely, how to live as aboriginal people, go get our food from the earth. We rather exchange monetary value for what is given freely so because we have subjected our land to commerce and trade with foreigners to now deal in commerce under fictitious titles and addresses of locations to tax people to play in this commercial game now inheritance and land and knowledge now, the, the knowledge know how to cultivate to leave enough resources of earth to sustain generations and generations was essential. This is what our great minds, not to develop the most expensive car, not to develop the most expensive invention that's not going to do nothing for them. We no longer desire the things that we need to function within nature being that we were supposed to be these shamans these mediums these mediators between heaven and earth to make sure things were aligned with these universal laws and principles right to cultivate naturally instead we have developed ideas and things that would develop gross financial commerce monetary gain so instead of developing the invention that will make the earth produce natural fruit, natural whatever to sustain populations or to build housing, to build resources, shelter, to not require one to exchange money. One will find more value in finding a way to get the monetary value versus the social value of developing the social riches that come with developing systems. So now the great minds, now the priests have to be acquired through monetary exchange. Now your healing has to be acquired through monetary exchange. Now your knowledge has to be received through monetary exchange. You cannot now receive the necessary information for your awakening if now you don't have the monetary value to buy, to exchange So, we need to redirect our intentions when we say support business, support this, support that. If things are bought for monetary exchange, they have no value. Meaning, in order to wear my shirt, you must feed 100 people in a month and you can earn 
a shirt. So now everybody that you see wearing this shirt, everybody that you see wearing this shirt, you know someone has fed a hundred people. This now plays value. Not something that you can buy. You can't buy this shirt. You have to do this service. You have to do this duty in order to acquire my art. My creation. So this is what places value. This is where we have been dismissed from because we have been dismissed as aboriginal people from our natural functioning. The same way animals have been disconnected and can no longer exist freely in nature. Instead, they must remain in captive being fed, being bathed, being told to go here. It's time for you to come inside and dwell in here in this shelter. You can't. Instead of being in one's true nature in the wild, surviving, eating, right, existing. As the gods, we must stand up and do judgment. The scriptures say, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judges amongst the gods, right? Judgment must be done. Redemption for the earth, for the natural inhabitants of the land. We must break the bonds of captivity. And that is some of the hardest things because our own feeding, our own daily habits of survival are entwined with being captivated. So we must disconnect from our own understanding of surviving and be willing to risk death and seeking life. So, could this be what one shall seek to, one shall lose his life and gain his life, but the one who looks, who looks to save his life shall lose his life. See, in the New Testament, in Matthew, the sixth chapter, it talks about you can't serve two masters. There's God who provides everything that you need freely and there's manna, money, almond that requires coin, exchange. Now, in this text in Matthew, in this New Testament, it says the animals, the birds, they're clothed, they're fed, they're taken care of. The most I said, how much lesser or greater are we than them? So, he has provided all our needs, but still we seek daily what we shall eat, what we shall wear, what to seek the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven was looked within. Find the God, the power within, the L within thee to redeem thee, to remove thee from the binds that have caused thee to remain in this dormant, this captivated, twined need to deal in commerce, capitalism, and removing ourselves from what is the proper way to do economics, business. Everything is supposedly not about a dollar, but then it is about a dollar. You know, everything is about how the, the numbers can populate money. 